Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. In today's video, I have five more Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. So now if you've been around for any amount of time, then you guys know I love to make tobacco baskets, but I've always ordered the materials online. So I wanted to figure out how I could do it with Dollar Tree items. So I took these Dollar Tree baskets, they're in the Easter aisle, and I started by having my husband cut those bolts off the side wherever the handle is connected. And then I take like the tag off and everything now it was a little tricky to figure out how to take these apart but good for you you have me to let you know the easiest way to do it so once you get that handle off and the ring around the top that's holding it together then you just want to take your scissors and every other piece that's connected to the top it's kind of like um it comes up the side and then it's tucked down into the inside. So every other one is tucked. You just want to take a small pair of scissors and just cut right along those lines every other one. Once you have all those cut, then every layer is one piece. So you just want to pull and they come off really, really easily. Now, once you get to the bottom of this basket, there are these very thin pieces that are holding the bottom so that it's nice and tight. You just want to snip in between each of the little pieces. And then once you have like a few cut, then the bottom pieces will come out very easily. So for the back of this basket, or for the initial part, I should say, I took the bottom pieces and I laid them out flat on my um, self-healing cutting mat and then I cut a piece of painters tape in half just so that way it's nice and thin and I laid it over top of each piece because this was already made into a basket the pieces are bent so I wanted to make sure that they stayed down really nicely so that I could get my pieces in there so like I'm doing here I just weave each per each piece over under over under and then the next piece I do will be the opposite so it'll be under over under over so then once I have them all laid out I did two on one side of the tape two pieces on the other side of the tape and then I taped each end down again so that it stayed flat I then just took some hot glue and I glued everywhere that a piece met so all the cross pieces you want to glue together sorry guys if you hear noises that's my girl in her little play yard spinning the little thing with the balls in it and having a good old time so just wanted to let you guys know if you hear any noises it's her having a grand old time <laughs> anyway so once you have it all hot glued then i take two more pieces I cross them now you want to start with the first piece glue that down and then do your next cross piece now the cross piece is optional but I think it's just for the look of it because any tobacco basket that I've seen has that X in the middle but it it's not gonna make a difference if you don't really like that if you want to keep that out so I did just want to mention that but now we are going to do the part where it's going to make it have that curve to it. So the easiest way to do this is probably to have little clips out. If you don't have clips, you'll just have to hold it, which takes a little bit longer, but you can definitely do it without the clips. But I always start about two away from the corner and then I glue that to them pieces, leaving some space in between where that last piece was and working my way all the way around hot gluing the pieces and using my little clips to help me hold it together now once you start doing this you'll see this take shape i usually go around the corner and then i'll glue that x piece down but that part is really up to you if I'm not really making much sense. 
in the right hand corner there's three dots and you can adjust the speed of this video so if you need to slow it down you're more than welcome to or rewind it and watch it back how many other or how many times you need to I forgot to mention that I did start on the inside of the basket going around and then once you come around again you're gonna have to add a few pieces because these uh, pieces aren't very long but once you go around once then you're going to go on the outer to sandwich it together you then just cut all those excess pieces off and then look how amazing this is you guys for a dollar you cannot beat it so last week when I did my little lanterns or little lights whatever you want to call them i got this brilliant idea to make a tobacco basket light so that is where this idea came from so i took these square wooden pieces from dollar tree and i measured where the middle was and then i took my um, square i laid it down and ran a knife across these are really cheap so that's all you have to do to cut these down so that's why i didn't bother taking out my big saw or whatever just score it a few times you can push on it and then go from the back score it again and it'll come right apart so once i had two pieces cut so all together you need four pieces you want to sand down the rough edges and then i take my kona stain and i stain all four pieces I had all four of those pieces stained then I did just want to show you originally I was just going to put um, like glue these together how I had them but because there was only like one little strand of lights in here I took the bulb off of that little lantern and then I took some square dowels I kind of measured how long I wanted it so basically how much the light is going to stick off of the basket and then I cut them down with my saw and I also stained those with the same stain as well. I then took my antique wax by Waverly and I just dry brushed all the way around. I actually made two baskets so two wall sconces and I just do the exact same thing for both that's why I'm only showing you one but I do give it a really heavy dry brushing because I have white walls I wanted these to pop off of the wall and that way you could see them really well so if you have any other color than white then I really wouldn't worry about going heavy on the dry brushing or you can paint it a different color that's the beauty about DIY and about DIY tutorials is you can change it up however you like. Next, I take the square dowels. I make sure that it is in the middle and then on one of each, so you're gonna do two total, I took a screw and I just screwed that square dowel um, from the back, that way it was nice and sturdy. I then took two strands of these led lights they're like little fairy lights from dollar tree i put batteries in them and then i put them inside of our little wall sconces candle holders whatever you want to call it and then once i had it in there the way that i liked making sure that the lights are towards the back i took my sure bond super glue and i glued that down Next, I take my white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush around all the pieces that are going to hold our lantern to the basket. Now, originally I was just going to leave these lids black, which I did those last week. If you guys haven't seen that video, I will link it in the cards in the right hand corner. But I did dry brush the jar as well because I wanted this to kind of look like a frosted glass almost just not really really frosted if that makes any sense um, so I did just dry brush a little bit on the glass jars so to attach this I kind of just laid it out to see where I wanted it and then I took that back piece 
I glued it down to the back and then while the glue was still hot then I pushed the top piece onto it now it didn't go all the way through just because um, you know the the pieces of the basket were there so I did just reinforce the front piece with some more hot glue and I do use Gorilla hot glue this stuff is amazing it holds like everything so um, I knew that these wouldn't go anywhere next I took the clips or the hangers that were on them from last week last week I took them off this week we're putting them back on so I did just go ahead and I squeeze them together because when I pulled them off they kind of stretched so I did just kind of squeeze them back together and then fit them right back onto the top once I put that clip back on then I kind of held it up and I guess I forgot to mention that prior to that I put the battery pack through the opening right above where that piece is in the front and then I kind of just glue the wire down to the battery pack and I did leave the part of the battery pack um, towards you know the wall that you need to take the screw out that way you could change the batteries easily so once I did that then I turned it on and I was looking at it and I'm like oh it's cute but I don't really know about this black top it doesn't really match too good so I did just take some truffle Waverly chalk paint and painted that entire thing as well as the part that makes it hang and then once that dried then I did of course surprise surprise take some white Waverly chalk paint and my little chip brush and I get again I just dry brushed all the way around the top of that little lantern part Once the dry brushing was done then literally all there was to do was hang the lantern back onto that piece you guys I only hung this with command strips I don't like to put nails in my wall if I don't have to and they held up really nicely look how amazing these turned out they didn't turn out as amazing as I hoped that they would or that I had in my mind but I am still so happy with them let me know in the comments down below what you think okay friends so I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people to explore new skills deepen passions you may already have and get lost in creativity right now I'm currently taking a few courses like watercoloring and hand lettering essentials for beginners my favorite is the hand lettering essentials for beginners with mary kate mcdevitt because i have been wanting to learn hand lettering for so long that way i don't have to print off my stuff and then trace it on and i really love that the classes are short and to the point with interactive content so that you get a one-on-one -on -one with experience and you really feel like you know the teacher teaching you you can do these classes in your spare time or you can do them one right after the other i like to take like one course per day and i have found that it really helps me with trying to do hand lettering so Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. There are no ads and they're consistently adding new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Plus, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And I thought that you guys might want to know that if you click the link in my description box, if you click the title of the video, a box will appear. That is the description box. The first thousand people to click that link will get a free premium trial. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay guys, so moving on to our next DIY. This one is super duper simple and you guys know that I love these longer signs. So I take three beware signs from Dollar Tree. I cut the tags off of them, flip them around so that they're face up and then I take some large popsicle sticks and some hot glue and I just glue them together where the seams are. 
I then took this chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. You guys, this stuff is actually amazing. I am totally impressed with this chalkboard paint. But um, I just take some on the end of my brush and I do a light coat of this chalk paint. You really don't, or this chalkboard paint, you really don't need much and it's really, really nice coverage. But I did per usual once again want that wood color showing through to make it look like it's weathered i then took some yardsticks which my husband had already sanded down for me and i just measure out the frame once i had the frame measured out then i take it to my saw i cut those pieces down and i uh, stain them with my kona stain once again once I had them stained, then I set them aside to dry. So we're going to work on the wreath and I got this wreath from Dollar Tree and I had this eucalyptus garland in my stash so I figured it would be perfect for this project. So I just unravel it and then I measure out how much I need. I cut it down and then I glue it down with some hot glue. this wreath is looking amazing already but I did just want to put some different kind of greenery as well as some like white flowers I had already um, cut off of a pick that I got from Walmart so um, I just kind of randomly go in with these white flowers that I had already cut off of a pick from Walmart and there's no rhyme or reason I just keep looking at it seeing how I like it and of course I have my little helper here next to me we spilt a whole thing of truffle paint fun 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 but once I had all my little white flowers in there then I do just take these cotton pods from Dollar Tree and again I just randomly place them around my wreath as well once I had my little cotton uh, glued down so some of them I didn't have to glue down and then they do have wire in the back so really all you have to do is just kind of wrap them around and then um, kind of tie them in the back but of course I always have to do things the harder way so <laughs> I would just uh, use the wire piece and wrap them around the back so next I'm going to show you the original wreath I was going to put on here I cut six pieces of different ribbon two pieces of each and then one piece that's just one <laughs> and um, I cut them about 16 inches and then I just kind of fold them down halfway cinch them put them all together and then tied them and then I took the end pieces cut them down and I attached it to my wreath now for some reason I didn't really like that one so I did just take that one off and then I had this ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby so you kind of just want to make a um what are those little cancer ribbons called kind of like a cancer ribbon and then you just cinch that right in the middle tie a piece of jute to it and then cut your tails however you like it so I like mine in dovetails so that's what I did but if you like them on a slant then that's totally up to you but I fluffed my bow up like I said I cut dovetails in it and then I just attached it to my wreath with some hot glue Next, I took my white Waverly chalk paint once again and my chip brush and I just dry brushed all around this sign, but I didn't want it too white, so I did go back in with my finger sander and I sanded some of that white down. I glued down the frame pieces with some hot glue and then I just drilled a screw into the middle of this to hang my wreath and then that was it you guys look how simple but amazing this looks sometimes little or less is more I strongly believe that so I definitely love this and it's already up in my house so before we get started on our last few DIYs I did want to thank Kate Derrick my dear friend Rihanna Royana and two other anonymous people for buying me a coffee. If you guys like my work and want to buy me a coffee, the link is in the description box. 
so for these two signs that I made I took two Dollar Tree signs they had galvanized bunnies on the front so I did take the bunnies off and the tags I filled the holes with some lightweight spackling and then once I get once again I gave them a coat of the chalk paint or chalk board paint uh, leaving some of that wood color showing through I then took my farm charm transfer from chalk couture and I didn't want it to be a longer sign so I did just lay down farm and then the rest of it I laid down on the backing of the transfer and I took two colors I like this technique some people don't like it because it's a waste of chalk paste but you guys this chalk paste lasts forever so it's really not a big deal to me but if you're worried about that and you do have these products then um just do one color you can also go on your computer and print out the wording that you like and transfer it on with some graphite paper and then go over it with some Arteza paint pens the Arteza link is also in the description box as well as some info on chalk couture I am running a special this week or this month so if you sign up for club in the month of February which is a DIY subscription then I will send you a free goodie in the mail in March so I just wanted to mention that it's not a big deal if you can't I you know it's for the people who ask me about it all the time so don't come for me in the comments but anyway so for the animals, I did the exact same technique, except I just stacked the animals on top of each other. I then took a pencil and just drew a border around the edges and then went in with my white paint pen and I went over those edges. I then took my white Waverly chalk paint, surprise, surprise, and I dry brush all the way around the edges as well as um, the entire sign, but a very light coat of dry brushing. I did that to both signs, the exact same thing. I then made two simple bows with this burlap um, ribbon with black on the edges i did get that around christmas time at walmart and i always pick up a few spools once i see them around christmas because i know i won't see them again until next year i then just glued the bows to the top of these signs and then you guys look how amazing this is the reason that i love using chalk couture and have been using it a lot lately a lot lately is just because it's a lot quicker than um, transferring something on and then or tracing it on and going over it with a paint pen but it is always an option to go on your computer print off whatever you like and um, trace that on and go over it so last but not least I take this little um, jar from Dollar Tree. I give it a good coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral. I then take some antique wax and dry brush and then I had this white jute from Walmart. I put a dab of hot glue on the back and then I wrap it around and then secure it in the back again with hot glue. That was it for this video you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. They're all my favorite. Per usual, I can't pick a favorite. I really do love the little lanterns, but I also love the sign with the wreath. I don't know, you guys. And I love the chalk couture signs. I can't ever choose, but I know you guys will let me know in the comments. I love hearing it because I'm always surprised. The ones that I think you guys will love, um is the total opposite of what you picked so it's just funny to see that but if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy and i love you with all my heart and soul don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it subscribe if you haven't already don't forget to message me email me if you want to learn more about chalk couture also, if you want to join my VIP group, that is All Things Crafty VIP. I would love to have you. So with all that being said, have a wonderful week and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.